Now let's talk about who might develop a biotin deficiency. That way you can match these symptoms to some of the potential reasons as to why biotin deficiency can happen. So if we can go to how biotin is absorbed, I'll throw a slide up for you because if we, if we understand how biotin is absorbed, then we can understand a little bit better about whether or not you're at risk for developing a deficiency. So first and foremost, you need stomach acid to absorb biotin. So let's think about all the ways that stomach acid can be disrupted. And let's, uh, and, and let's go ahead and add those to the list of those who are at risk for the development of biotin deficiency. Number one, if you have a diagnostic condition, if somebody, if your GI doctors diagnosed you with achlorhydria or a lack of stomach acid or an absence of stomach acid production, this is a kind of a, a hallmark of somebody who might have a problem with biotin deficiency because the absorption of biotin requires acid. You need stomach acid. And so that means Tums and Rolaids and Nexium and Prilosec and Tagamet and all the different medicines that we know that you know, neutralize stomach acid or suppress the production of stomach acid could potentially contribute to an inability to properly absorb biotin. Now, most of biotin is absorbed in the small intestine. So it's broken down in your food through acid, but then when it hits the small intestine, it's taken up by the cells of the small intestine. So what might affect the small intestine that could contribute to a biotin deficiency? Well, we've got a number of different diseases of the small intestine. So if we think about this, you know, one of them is celiac disease. Celiac, or uh, I'm not using these words interchangeably because celiac disease and gluten sensitivity are not the same thing. Everybody with celiac is gluten sensitive, but not everybody with gluten sensitivity develops celiac disease. But we do know that gluten sensitivity can lead to intestinal damage of the small intestine. And that inflammation of the small intestine can contribute to malabsorption because again, most of your biotin is absorbed by the small intestine. So one of the other things that we need functioning is the pancreas, so, because one of the other things that plays a role in, in biotin absorption is the pancreas. The pancreas produces a substance called biotinidase, which aids in biotin absorption. So without pancreatic, so if you've got like, maybe you've gone to the doctor and they told you you have pancreatitis, right? Or you've got pancreatic insufficiency problems. This might put you at risk, okay, for developing a biotin deficiency. If you've got an inflammatory bowel issue like celiac disease, but celiac is not the only one. Some people have Barrett's esophagitis. Some people have uh, inflammation in the stomach. Some people have inflammation in the small intestine uh, that can be caused by infections and uh, food allergens and a host of other issues that are not gluten related. Parasites can do this as well, parasitic infection. Um, and that can create small intestinal inflammation leading to, again, damage to the brush border. So part of where biotin is absorbed is by the brush border of your small intestine. So if you remember this, that celiac disease is hallmark. The symptoms are that the brush border of the small intestine is eroded, and that's what villus atrophy is. So there are other diseases and other things that can cause villus atrophy and erosion of the brush border. So we know that in some people, soy protein can do it. We know that parasite infection can contribute to brush border erosion. We know that corn can contribute to brush border erosion. So these are all potential possibilities. Again, that could contribute to a scenario that leads to your inability to properly absorb biotin. So again, you need stomach acid. It's absorbed in the small intestine, but it's also part of that absorption is, is the brush border doing its job. And part of that absorption is important that your pancreas is functioning to produce biotinidase to help you take that biotin up into the bloodstream directly. Now, biotin has a number of different target tissues that it will travel to. Your brain needs a lot of biotin, your liver needs a lot of biotin, your muscle needs a lot of biotin. Let's think about what biotin's for. It's for the breakdown of carbs, fats, and proteins. I already erased it, but it's for the breakdown of carbs, fats, and proteins. So uh, in, in terms of generating energy, those organs use more energy pound for pound than other organs do. So this is why it's a target tissue for lots of biotin. Your muscle, your brain, your liver use a lot of energy. Now, biotin also aids in building fat. So once it's absorbed, okay, we said energy earlier, 
but energy is one aspect. So energy is a process where we break down carbs, fats, and proteins to generate ATP, but we also use biotin to build fat. Um, it's particularly important for biotin to aid in the building of fat. So it helps to elongate long chain or longer chain fatty acids. This is very, very important that you understand that biotin is not just about breaking fat down. It's also about helping your body build fat. Remember what fats do we need to build? We need to build the oils that come out of our skin, the oils that secrete into our hair, the oils that secrete to our nails. Those are all important functions of biotin. We also need oil around every cell membrane. We need oil for the elongation of essential fatty acids. Uh, you know, your fatty acids, for example, your omega-3 fats, very, very critical, very important. And so you need biotin to aid in the processing of those. It also helps to stabilize genetic integrity. This is one of the newer, um, the newer discoveries around biotin. So genetic stability. There, we're going to learn more about this in the next probably 10 years or so as, as technology advances, but there's areas that are being recognized that biotin uh, is taken up into, and these areas are, are genetic areas called histones. And so the, the suspicion is that biotin plays a role in stabilizing your genome or stabilizing your genetic material and your chromatin. And this is a very, very important part of cellular metabolism and cellular replication. So less is known about the actual the actual action of what biotin actually does here, but we, we believe very strongly that this is part of what biotin does. We've actually isolated biotin being uptaken by histone. So genetic st stability, again, this is relatively new in literature and, and, in, and in research. So most people will talk about its function in hair, its function in nails, its function in energy and building of fats, but you'll, you'll very rarely hear the genetic issue coming up as far as what biotin does. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.